after months of trying to purchase the U6 Enterprise and failing, and going through all the various stages of grief, I was finally able to purchase one. Yes! Well, it finally arrived. This is the fastest access point that Ubiquity makes. It is the Unify 6 Enterprise. So this has Wi-Fi 6E. I am super excited, so let's unbox this. Now another thing that makes this unique over the other access points by Ubiquity is that it has a 2.5 gigabit PoE port. None of my switches are 2.5 gig PoE. However, I do have a PoE injector that does support two and a half gig. And I'll have that connected to my Netgear switch, which does one gig, 2.5, five gig, and 10 gig. So here's the mounting uh, brackets and plate and then the rest of the mounting hardware and a little get started guide. Now up close, here is the PoE port on the access point and the reset switch right next to it, which is that little hole. What's nice about this is the mounting plate appears to be the same as what the SHD uses, as well as the Unify 6 Pro and also the long range one. If you're going to be upgrading an existing access point, this should be able to just clip right in. Logging into the Unify controller, it went ahead and detected the U6 Enterprise. I'm going to add it and now we just hurry up and wait. And as you can see here, it is downloading the latest firmware already. So that way it'll have the latest firmware uh, the first time that you boot it up basically after adopting it. Now, it used to be that you would adopt it or having problems adopting it because it didn't have a certain version of firmware already on it. And this typically is going to fix that issue. So it finally updated and went ahead and adopted. And what's interesting is that here you can see that it is connected at 2.5 gig. And when I click on it, if I look at the radios, I'm only seeing five and 2.4 gigahertz. I'm not sure why. And then another five gigahertz, which with Wi-Fi 6E, it should be six gigahertz. Let's see if we change the interface, if that makes any difference. So five gigahertz looks like that it is not running. So it looks like if we come over to settings using the new user interface and scroll on down here, we can actually configure the six gigahertz radio. So it says that it's enabled. Let's see if I can connect to it with my phone. So coming into the Wi-Fi settings, I'm going to now enable the six gigahertz and we'll wait for that to be applied. And what's interesting is on my phone, every once in a while, it pops up as a uh, Wi-Fi 6E control, but when I try to connect to it, it won't let me connect. And I know that this is the only Wi-Fi 6E uh, access point in the area. See, so that's that's interesting. I don't know why that is coming up like that. Using Wi-Fi Man connected over Wi-Fi 6E, I'm going to do a speed test. So that is 626.2 megabits down and 242.4 megabits up going from the access point over to the UDM Pro. Now let's run Open Speed Test, which is running on my desktop. Well, that's interesting. It is way faster on the upload than it is compared to the download. That went ahead and did 399.8 megabits down and 1,702.8 megabits up. Now this is interesting. It says that it is offline, but you can see that this is running and it's been sitting that way for several minutes. What I did is I turned off WPA3 on the Wi-Fi 6E SSID because my phone kept giving an error saying that it can't connect unless if it is using WPA3. So this is interesting. You can take a look at it. It says can't connect to this network. You can only connect to six gigahertz networks if they use WPA3 or OWE security. Now it wouldn't connect with WPA3, so I just disabled it, but it's still showing that it is offline. So let's unplug it and replug it. If this doesn't fix the issue on me connecting using six gigahertz, then I suspect there is still a issue with the firmware of the device. It is allegedly the latest version of firmware, but I might have to check the forums and see if there's anything newer than what is currently installed on this. All right, it shows it is getting ready. So this is interesting. It goes back into the offline status again. And what I did is I disabled the security and just made it open. And apparently that breaks things. I can't connect to it from my phone. It just gives an error saying that it can't connect. Let's see what happens here. 
So I got my phones to be able to connect, and what the issue was is I needed to go into all of the different Wi-Fi 6 SSIDs, so the 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, and then set them up for WPA3 instead of uh, WPA2 or 3 or WPA2. Originally, I had it configured with WPA2, and then I just jumped right up to WPA3 from what I was reading on some of the forums. So running open speed test again, let's see how fast it is on 6 gigahertz. Not that fast for the downloads. And this is on a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. So it got 422 megabits down and 1,715.8 megabits up. So now I'm going to try using a Pixel 6 and see what kind of speeds it gets. So that got 477.3 megabits down and 1,361.6 megabits up. Now I'm connected to the 5 gigahertz on the same Wi-Fi 6 access point. Let's see what kind of speeds we get. So this is on the Pixel 6 and it got 372.1 megabits download and 1029.4 megabits upload. I'm jumping back to the Samsung S21 Ultra. This is on the 5 gigahertz spectrum. We'll see how this performs. So that got 358.8 megabits download and 1131.6 megabits upload. Next, I'm going to test using my OnePlus 9 Pro, again, only on the 5 gigahertz, and let's see how this one does. So that got 355.2 megabits down and 908.2 megabits up. So what does this tell us? So Ubiquity took like four days to get back to me when I opened up a ticket on the issue with this access point. And I actually ordered the recommended PoE injectors and I got them before I got a response back on the ticket. So now I did swap this out from the trend net here and it made absolutely no difference to the performance whatsoever. So unfortunately, I had to put in an RMA to replace this and hopefully I'll get a replacement here soon. Now, what is upsetting to me is that I don't think this should have passed QA to begin with because that is definitely an issue that they should have been testing for. Let me know in the comment section below if I'm unreasonable thinking that they should have failed this to begin with or if you know by chance what they do as part of their QA process. Make sure that you're subscribed so that when I do get this replacement that you will be able to see the latest performance benchmarks that I go ahead and run on it. I'll catch you in the next one.